Hi friends. It is a rainy, kind of lazy day today, but we're gonna go into the chicken yard and I have to call, make a couple more decisions. I'm also gonna talk to you guys about uh, silver and gold jeans in whites. Uh, I learned something recently and wanna pass it along to you guys too. So I'm in the chicken yard and I have the young flock out. They usually get to go out during the day. I do switch them on and off to some of the other birds who haven't gotten out of their enclosures for a little while. But I want to talk to you guys about who the roosters are in this uh, grouping. Um, a few weeks ago I did go through and the ones that I knew were boys found new homes and also went to the history museum and a couple of them were late bloomers so i thought they were girls but um or if i didn't know if i wasn't sure i kept them so a few more kind of showed their true colors a little bit later so I'm going to tell you which ones I'm going to find new homes for, hopefully. And then there's two or three I'm going to keep. And the reason I'm going to keep them is because I kind of need a backup for the blue rooster I have that I haven't named yet. <laughs> the blue rooster I have with the splash and blue girls. And... He's darker blue. He's a blue too. And his feathering is beautiful and his body balance is beautiful. So I feel like I should really keep him because he is just gorgeous. So I'm going to keep him. And then I'm going to keep the little splash boy. Because if I put him with the flock that is with the blue rooster already... I get a different variation of what those hens would produce, him and those hens would produce. Um, and that's a nice alternative if I decide to go that way. You know, a lot of the reasons why I pick the colors that I do is because I love them. I think they're cool. The blues, so BBS is Blue Black Splash. And it's this weird genetic that you can get with two blues, you can get blue, black, splash. So just really cool genetics. And so I, if I have a blue rooster with different girls, then I get some a number of different, a number of different variations of those. And then if I do a splash instead, there's different variations too, like quantities of each. And then let's add the chocolates in there. So I can add the chocolate hens to a blue and splash rooster as well and get mauve, which is a really cool color. I've seen them and they're gorgeous. And then I also saw where you can do a mauve splash so the splash, the few splash that I have, they have blue spots and the mauve or chocolate splash, one of those has the chocolate or mauve spots. So that could be like an experiment. But the thing is, is I, I can have a couple of those roosters available for all of those hens in one flock. I don't have to put them on these, all these different pens and stuff. So that's like a really cool thought too, because space is all, you know, is, is a valuable commodity here on the farm. So let's take a look at those roosters that I want to keep. Okay. This is a splash rooster and he's one that I want to keep. He's got really good feathering. He's got a good feathering on his feet. He's got the six or five toes. He's got good coloring skin. He has a good, um, 
home. So he, and he's still young, so he will fill out even more. So I'm definitely keeping him. And this is the blue boy that I'm gonna keep. He is just beautiful. He's darker than I'm used to, so it's gonna be interesting. A light blue, blue, I mean a light blue as opposed to a dark blue. So if I use him at some point, I may eventually next summer put him with a couple of girls just to see how they turn out. But he's gorgeous. I may have to trim his, his crest because he's having a hard time seeing. So he's the second rooster I'm going to keep. So this is a little chocolate boy who won't be staying. And this is another blue rooster that won't be staying. And the reason why I'm not keeping them is their crest is small. So their head feathering is not enough to where I would keep them. They're beautiful, but I wouldn't keep them for breeding. I want those crests to be big, or at least larger than this. And the other one that turned out to be a rooster is this beautiful naked neck boy. He, uh, it was so cool. I think he's the first naked neck that I've ever hatched. And unfortunately it's a boy. So the reason why he is going is because I don't want a ton of naked necks. And um, I could possibly get a lot and not be able to find homes for them or to sell them. I don't see where a lot of naked not. I don't see where a lot of naked necks are uh, something that's wanted in our community. So this other chocolate rooster, and this is another blue rooster. And again, it tends to be the head feathering that is lacking that I'd like to um, weed out right from the beginning. So that's about it. All the rest um, are girls. The There are four of these girls that will be going to a new home. I have a friend who's purchasing them for a friend. And um, I think could be Thursday, so a couple of days from now. And a few of them, there's one chocolate girl who's going. And again, it's because of crest. Her crest isn't as large as I would like to keep. This white girl, there's a little white girl there. She's going to be going. And then there's two little black girls that are from Johnny and June. So they don't have any beards. So that's the changes that I'm making with these guys. And I have no idea how I'm going to shuffle around the pens yet. Um, this pen is really large and it may be that that huge flock goes in there. But it's not enclosed for winter. So I'll have to see. Hopefully the new barn's done by then. So we'll find out. Hey. The boys are starting to fight. So I do have to make my decisions uh, and separate them soon because they are getting into those teenage kind of attitudes. Okay, let's get into white genetics. You guys know that Hey, I'm trying to do a video. Hey. Let's give them a minute. Oh, I'll give them a minute. Hold on. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. 
<clears throat> so I'm new to chicken genetics. And it's not easy. <laughs> I actually purchased a book um, from Sigrid Van Dort, who is over in England. And this incredible silky genetics book. History of silkies, everything. It's really cool. It's expensive, but it was worth it. And then she also has a Facebook page where you can talk to her and verify with any questions you can have. And I did ask her some questions just because even her book as um, not dumbed down, but she speaks kind of mostly in clear language. You can usually understand what she's trying to say and she gives examples, which I definitely need. So Freddie and Cher uh, had chicks. And I had separated them because I thought they were both gold. Okay, let's talk about that real quick. As far as I understand, there are gold and silver genetics in every chicken. But with whites, you can see it. Silver genetics in whites is more desirable because they are brighter looking. So people try to get the silver uh, whites for showing and stuff. They just look brighter. So I had separated my flocks thinking that Freddie and Cher were gold and my other ones were silver. Little did I know it's not how it works. What's cool about Cher and Freddie's chicks is that as a chick, you can tell which is the silver, which is the gold. And then there's a mix because the silver is stronger than the gold genes. So it's silverish yellow. Gold or yeah, silver grayish with yellow. The thing is is that that silverish grayish yellow is boys. That gene is sex linked. So a girl chicken is only going to be one or the other. It'll never be a mix. So they'll either be both jeans are silver or both jeans are gold. If it's a silverish gold, it's a boy because girls can only be one or the other. So Cher hatched three babies. And when I looked at them, and I'll put a picture up here video. <clears throat> We got one of each. So we got a silver, we got a gold, and then we got a mixed. And I'm trying to figure out how to mark them because they'll start changing and going towards the white. And so when they get a little bit older, I'm probably not gonna be able to tell which one was which. And I haven't quite figured out. So if I know which chicken or which chick is a pure silver, which they would have to be to show this silver, I can eventually um, gather a flock. I would assume it would take a few generations. I would eventually have a flock of just silvers and I would know. So I thought I'd be able to tell once we hatched chicks from <clears throat> Freddie and Cher, oh, okay, I'll be able to tell which one, but I got one of each. So I got, I have no idea what the parents are because they could be any and every combination. So I don't know what the parents are. <laughs> They've got to mix somehow. So I think the only way would be to um, just start separating somehow the silvers and keeping the silvers. And once I determine boys or girls, then, um, you know, we just go from there. So the boys can be all silver and the girl or the boys can be all silver or all gold too. So I still don't know whether those two um, are boys or girls, but definitely the mixed one, according to Sigrid, is it should be a boy. So I'm going to mark them and you guys can come along this little experiment with me and uh, we'll see how it goes.
These are the chicks now at almost three weeks old. The picture I showed you before was just a few days old. So you can start to see they're feathering out and the white feathers are coming in. So it's harder to determine who's who. So I do have to figure out how to mark them very soon.